Yeah. Welcome. I'm sorry I have to stand a little bit behind this because here is my notes. Uh, I'm a small person. So <laughs> um, yeah, today we will take you uh, on a journey towards hybrid learning designs, uh, starting up with giving you an intro to our project work and the dare established structure of support for hybrid teaching formats. To speak about certain challenges and strategies of hybrid teaching, we will then proceed further to two specific case studies we undertook in the last fall semester, giving you insights in the evaluation results we got from the student survey and concluding with our perspective on good practices in hybrid teaching. Um, at the network project, uh, Netzwerk Projekt Hybride Lehre, it's a QEO project. Um, teams of six universities are developing and testing different scenarios for hybrid teaching and learning. At Freie Universität Berlin, we work on the design, implementation and assessment of good practices in hybrid teaching by supporting teachers as well as students in meeting the challenges of hybrid learning environments. Within this project, we were able to publish a call for teaching grants so educators can apply to get funding for exploring the hybrid teaching terrain. Part of this funding program consists in analyzing and evaluating the given hybrid teaching scenarios. In order to enhance the implementation of the hybrid teaching scenarios within the funding program, we came up with a unique support structure I will show you there. So here you can see that in order to analyze and evaluate the hybrid teaching scenarios thoroughly, we provide a support structure starting prior to the course in the application phase where we get to know the persons involved in the hybrid teaching scenarios and assist them in realizing their ideas. During the semester, we visit the classes online and on-site to make observations on the implementation of the hybrid teaching scenarios, as well as to assist with the technical setting. In order to establish good practices, we do a student assessment survey and conduct interviews with uh, the involved educators and moderators. Moreover, we accompany these case-based support services by providing information and how-tos concerning hybrid teaching in our wiki. Also, we do hybrid workshops in which participants on-site and online are joining each other live within a hybrid learning environment in order to enable experience-based learning on effective hybrid learning designs. To gain deeper understanding about current concepts of hybrid teaching, we organize and participate in a series of lunch talks and journal clubs within the Netzwerk Hybride Lehre. For today, we uh, selected two specific cases that were part of our funding program at Freie Universität in the fall semester 23-24. And I will uh, continue uh, showing you the first case. Uh, it presents itself in a bachelor seminar featuring a collaborative international learning scenario. Before the beginning of the semester, there were sessions on campus abroad exclusively for the students uh, of that abroad university. So in the country given, the semester starts and ends a few weeks earlier than in Berlin and Germany. The hybrid sessions uh, then took place in Berlin using video conferencing technology by Cisco, namely the Cisco Room 55, which is a 55-inch interactive screen with built-in cameras and microphones so that students online and on-site can see and speak to each other. The course also featured learning tandems. Accompanying the live sessions, the students abroad and in Berlin had to join international project groups to gain deeper understanding of the course subject. The hybrid sessions were followed by an on-campus um, sessions exclusively for Berlin students when the semester abroad ended. So both groups of students had non-hybrid sessions on-site at their university, combined with hybrid sessions taking place in Berlin. Here we highlighted the aspect of internationalization because this case shows how you can use hybrid scenarios to enable international collaborations in order to enhance cross-cultural perspectives on the course subject. In order to make that work, it was crucial for the educator to be known in both places. Because the educator had already established a relationship to the students abroad when the hybrid session started, it was easier for the educator to directly address the online students in order to integrate them in, in group discussions. So our second case features a master project seminar of an international master studies program. This project seminar is obligatory for students who participate in study-related internships or field studies. And since this master program has an international context, 
many students spend at least part of the semester in a country abroad. In order to still allow those students to finish their studies in time, uh, while at the same time spending time abroad, this master project seminar was taught hybridly. Here we had a course consisting mainly of hybrid sessions in Berlin, taught by a teaching tandem of two educators, both on site. And during the semester, the students had to join dis one distinct group out of three in order to realize a project, namely an online student conference in the end of the semester. The students also worked on different individual uh, study projects linked to the general topic of the course. Love it, by the way, that the wind is uh, <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, with out? is it going to be better if we take them out? How will yeah, but we will, we will say um, like a few things about acoustics uh, in hybrid <laughs> scenarios uh, coming up. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's, uh, that's good that the wind is uh, on our side. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, these hybrid sessions featured uh, also video conference system by Cisco, uh, uh, Cisco Room 55, the same as in the first project. But here uh, we had an additional table microphone. So in this case, we highlighted the aspect sense of community, since the educators introduced a varied range of interactive methods to enable communication between online and on-site students. Uh, as well to mention, this is a master stu study program uh, studied by a total of about 120 students, so many of the students already knew each other prior to the semester, making it easier to establish contact between online and on-site students. So. Um, focusing uh, on certain challenges and strategies concerning hybrid teaching scenarios. We came up with a framework to acknowledge the different aspects of hybrid teaching as well as their interrelations to one another. In a primary dimension, educators and students join each other in a hybrid learning experience. But since hybrid scenarios feature various dimensions and spaces wedging into one another, it cannot remain that simple. A widely regarded counter-argument against hybrid formats is the challenge for educators to focus on the content of their classes as well as meeting the technical requirements and trying to equally include their audience online and on-site. So it's an overwhelming multitasking situation. This is why we added a second dimension where the hybrid learning experience within a scenario depends on the setting, the enabling of the scenario, as well as the community building in the scenario. So students and educators are facing certain challenges in order to play along within the setting as well as in their efforts to come together in a community. For example, challenges regarding the setting for the educator mean factors like being present in both locations or acquiring the technological skills in order to make the setting working. For the students, it can also mean having access to the learning management system or accessibility in general to spaces and or equipment. Contrib contributing to the community, students are starting to act as moderators, volunteer assistants or troubleshooters. Furthermore, they are joining in different forms of group work. For the educators, on the other hand, it can also mean that they enable a sense of community by their behavior. For example, by being available, being enthusiastic. It can also mean to try new things and build teaching teams. In order to make the hybrid learning experience worthwhile and working, there are certain strategies which depend on the inner relation between the resulting experience and the other stakeholders. Starting from the left, the educators need to seek balance between content and hybrid modality. So in order to make a hybrid scenario work, you need to plan to spend some, but only some and not most of the time to establish common ground. No matter how well you plan it though, the risk of unplanned encounters or technical difficulties in hybrid scenarios remains very high. So concerning the interrelation between the setting and the hybrid learning experience, it can be helpful to advertise a modus of experimentation of all participants to ensure flexibility when facing difficulties or uncertainties. It is also essential to acknowledge that the students are not a homogeneous group of people, but rather a very diverse group not only meaning in different locations, online or on-site. They will have different motivations concerning the hybrid learning experience and choose individual strategies to tackle the challenges presented to them. Last, but obviously, obviously equally important, we come to the root connection of our framework, namely between the community and the hybrid learning experience, or the building of a community within this experience. 
Here we need to establish a sense of learning together by taking into account the different learning experiences and types. Now we would like to present some curated results of the student assessment we undertook in the introduced case studies, and in doing so we will also respond to the different aspects of hybrid teaching within this framework. Yeah, thanks Lena. Um, yeah, go into the results of our student assessment. At the end of the semester, we uh, ran a survey with the students of both courses. We got 15 answers, which means around 40% of the students in these two courses. As we can see in the pie chart, when we asked the students how they participated, we can see that there is a variety in how they did it. Yeah? If we, yeah, sorry that I cannot use the pointer, but around 65% of the students switch between being sometimes online and sometimes on-site. There is 35% of the students decided for one mode, which was online or on-site, and stood in that mode. When we analyze this variety inside the two courses, we can also see it. So what we can conclude is, what we saw is that the students in both courses switch among the different ways of participation. So one of the fears or sometimes the suspicion that we have that is sometimes a course goes hybrid, some teachers or educators will think, okay, now all students will go online and nobody will come to the class. This is something we have not experienced in these courses. Yeah. Then we asked the students uh, what were the reasons for deciding how to participate and we provided them and let them ask between multiple reasons and they could give us multiple answers. So we had 35 answers, so which is around 2.3 answers per student. And there to show the results we created a new group which is the group of online students who are those who participated only online or mostly online. And we can see that their decision, then this is in the percentage of their total number of this, uh, reasons, is mainly because they were abroad or mainly because they wanted to learn with other students. This means for the students who were outside Germany, the only way to learn with the German students was by participating in this course online. Then we have our uh, most dynamic group, which is the half-half, students who could switch or decided to switch between these two modalities. And here we can see with 35% that time management and flexibility was their main reason for doing so. The group of students that participate with mostly on-site, we can see that their decisions based or their reasons based are based more in the social interaction and the learning atmosphere and the learning with other students. So what we can see is that students have multiple and different reasons yeah, to decide how to participate in a class. So when we ask about a disturbing specific technical issues, um, we got 14 answers uh, that were mentioned and these are the two rooms where the classes uh, on-site took place. We can see on the picture on the left in the bachelor seminar, all students refer in that room to technical difficulties and most of them uh, refer to the sound, yeah, the speakers or the microphone or to acoustic feedback. Whereas in the picture to the right, we have the master project seminar, only a third percent of the students refer to difficulties. So here the obvious question is, what was different between these two rooms? Even if it's not vi visible in the room uh, to the left, there, as Lena already mentioned, they had a Cisco room 55. So the technical equipment in that sense was the same. But the difference was that in the room to the right, they had a table microphone, which meant that students could communicate in a better way between the on-site and the online. Whereas in the room to the left, only the first three rows could communicate directly with the people online. For the people who were sitting at the back, questions and comments had to be repeated and this was found disturbing by the students. So if we, there is something that we can um, highly recommend us, uh, please check acoustic and sound problems because they really make a difference. As we can see here when we have the win, <laughs> thanks to the win we can also prove it here. Um, it can become a very disturbing factor. Yeah? So, 
We also ask the students regarding what we have uh, named building a community, so the interaction between the people that were online and the people that were on site. And on a Likert scale, we ask them yeah, how inspiring they found the interaction with the group that was online. So for the people that were on site, how inspiring it was for to interact with the people online and vice versa. When we see the bachelor seminar, and when we see the second uh, row, for the people attending on-site, so 100%, so all of them said that the interaction with the people online was inspiring. Whereas this number for the people attending online reaches an 80%. So we have similar percentages here. When we check an our second project, yeah, we can see that for people attending online, the interaction with the people on-site was also more than 80, around 85% was inspiring. But when we ask the people attending on-site how they find the interaction that people that were online, this percentage reaches a 60%. So we have 40% of students that were sitting in the room that don't agree on the inspirational value of the interaction. Since we also have some open questions in our uh, survey, we can tell you that this relates to that some students said it was uh, still difficult breaching the students. So the interaction and sometimes that uh, between the two groups and sometimes the dynamic of a discussion that was taking on place on site uh, had to be a bit slow down to include the people that were online. So this was uh, still not that satisfactory. Yeah. But uh, in any case, what we can suggest is that uh, from our data that interaction can be perceived differently by the different groups. So it's worth asking the two different types of uh, students how they find the interaction or any other um, variable and also the why. So when we have the answers to these, those two questions, we can address and take some other uh, measures or provide other strategies to improve the class. So. Regarding, we also ask the students regarding the interaction with the educators. So what helped them in that situation inside the classroom and also outside the classroom? Uh, many students refer to the live classes. They were really highly valued by the people having that possibility of interaction, but also the interaction outside the classroom. So office hours and also answering emails fast was highly valued and also the, that they could see the effort of the educators trying to bridge both groups of the students. This was highly valued. Yeah, therefore, when we come to our last question in our survey, um, we asked the students, would you like to have more hybrid courses after this experience? And we can see in our, in our project seminar, all students said, yes, we would like more courses. But in the bachelor seminar, we have like around 50% of the students were undecided. So from our numbers, what we conclude is in general, 80% of the students would like to have hybrid courses. There is a still a group of students that are undecided, so they still don't know. But we didn't find any student that said, no, this is not for me. Um, so being said that, um, some takeaways that we have we have always asked ourselves, what is a good practice in hybrid teaching? And from our framework and our experience, what we can see is that we call a good practice is whenever we try to adapt our teaching methods by considering the technical setting we have, yeah, but also the physical room, what the room uh, allows us to do or not to do, and also what relies on a teamwork. Uh, it has been already mentioned, sometimes the pressures for educators to know everything better than the students. Well, to take that pressure away, let's work with other people, let's work with other teachers on teaching tandems, let's give, uh, try to give other role to the students, and let's build a community that is learning all together. Uh, and consider also for us as educators that we have a diverse group. People that are online are different than the people that are on site. Yeah. So in any case, all these good practices or this adaptation should, should try to provide a surplus for the students and also for the educators. So um, our takeaway, um, something that we call a fact. 
the teaching experience will be different. Yeah, it's not the same teaching hybrid that teaching online or on site. So we have to embrace this is going to be different. So first, it's a question to ourselves as educators: what is our willingness to adapt and to change? And we can only suggest that we dare to experiment. And also, the learning experience will be different. We have, as we said, different students that will have different experiences. So in this sense to try to create a community. Uh, team building exercises are very important to bridge both groups of students, ask for help, and yes, let's try to embrace the experimentation modus that we are now on. Um, we know this is not perfect, but it may be a possible future. So uh, some links to our project, to our wiki, a workshop that we are giving, and um, being said that, we thank you very much for your attention. This is our contact information, and we are happy about the questions.